Good afternoon and welcome to this service of Noonday Prayer at All Saints Episcopal Church in Concord, North Carolina. Our worship is from the Episcopal Book of Common Prayer and is found on page 103. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The psalm today is Psalm 73, verses 24 to 28. You will guide me by your counsel and afterwards receive me with glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And having you, I desire nothing upon earth. Though my flesh and my heart should, should waste away, God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Truly, those who forsake you will perish. You destroy all who are unfaithful. But it is good for me to be near God. I have made the Lord God my refuge. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our reading this day is from the epistle of James. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes in the dispersion, greetings. My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of any kind, consider it nothing but joy, because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its full effect, so that you may be mature and complete, lacking in nothing. If any of you is lacking in wisdom, ask God, who gives to all generously and ungrudgingly, and it will be given to you. But ask in faith, never doubting, for the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind, for the doubter being double-minded and unstable in every way, must not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Let the believer who is lowly boast in being raised up, and the rich in being brought low because the rich will disappear like a flower in the field. For the sun rises with its scorching heat and withers the field. The flower fades and its beauty perishes. It is the same way with the rich. In the midst of a busy life, they will wither away. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today we give thanks for the life and witness of Charles de Foucault. Charles was born in 1858, and when he was six years old and his sister was three, his mother died in the spring, and then his father in the summer. He was sent to live with his paternal grandparents, uh, his paternal grandfather, and uh, he also died, and then to their maternal parents, and that his grandmother died, and it was his grandfather who raised him, his grandfather who was the one who um, helped him find a way out of the tragedy of his um, early life. His grandfather was a man of considerable means and Charles wanted for nothing, and that led to considerable dissolute living. Um, he was the one who uh, was first to the party and um, last to leave. He was known at the time as Fats Foucault because of his great love of wine and food. And uh, he took up being a military person because he, um, well, that was kind of the way that he was going to, I think, entertain himself. Um, that worked for a while um, but he was always getting himself into trouble um, most most, uh, towards the end of his service uh, because he insisted on bringing uh, his um, mistress with him. When finally he returned to um, his, his life, he just could not find a way forward. But he did know that he had a passion for Algiers, for the Sahara, and so he set about 
exploring Morocco. Now, the only problem was that Morocco was closed to Christians. So Dave Foucault um, disguised himself as a Jew. Um, he impersonated a rabbi on several occasions uh, and um, was always vague about where he was from and where he was going. He walked the length of Morocco, some 3,000 kilometers. And during that trip, he made copious notes and those notes became um, the first opening, really, of Morocco to the West. When he arrived at the border with Algiers, he was thin and gaunt, but he had found something, something that made life worth getting up for. He wouldn't quite call it faith yet. After returning home, though, he began to pray in earnest, and, and I love this statement. My God, if you exist, allow me to know you. Uh, in the four years of um, life in Paris, De Foucault found a grounding for his faith, and that called him into the life of a Trappist monk. He wound up uh, in Palestine. He spent time as a hermit in Palestine, and then agreed to ordination in 1900. And at that time, he asked to be sent to Algiers. He said he wanted to live a life of faith that would shout the gospel. And he was um, a very effective preacher, if you would be. People came to him at all hours of the day and night, but he attracted no Christian followers. He uh, offered hospitality to Muslims, to Jews, to pagans, weary travelers, and continued um, his work and witness. Most of his time uh, was taken up with developing a dictionary of Tuareg, which is the um, nomadic tribe that inhabits the, the Saharas, they're descendants of the Berbers. Um, and he completed a, a French Tuareg dictionary shortly before his death. He was, his goal was to do a grammar and then um, complete translating into translation of the Bible. He had translated the New Testament. Unfortunately, um, war in Europe spilled over into Northern Africa. The French garrison near to his hermitage was overrun. And um, one day, two soldiers came out to warn him. It's thought, perhaps, um, but they never made it. They were killed along with De Foucault, and we remember him on his death uh, date of December 1st. 1916. David Cole is a, a wonderful witness to a life of searching and a life of faithful service. He did lament the fact that he didn't wasn't particularly su successful um, as one who was um, seeking to proclaim the gospel in ways that we people would turn to Christ. But he was so very effective in being, um, being and embodying the gospel. The, um, the statement that Jesus says, you know, do that all of the scriptures can be summarized in loving God and loving neighbor. That we would not do to others what we wish not would, would not be done to ourselves. That we would do to others what we would want for ourselves. Those were the guiding principles of David Cald's life. In the midst of all of this busyness, I think it's um, marvelous that we have this opportunity to reflect on David Cald, who had everything the world could offer and found it wanting and wanted after the one thing that could only be given and never purchased. As we wait to celebrate the coming of the child who is the light of the world, um, I pray that you, in the midst of this very busy time, 
will also have time to ponder this incredible gift, the gift of light and hope in a world desperate for good news. May this be a season in which your faith is deepened and hope is found. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come to you. Loving God, help us to know you wherever we find you and to seek and serve you in all people, that with your servant, Charles de Foucauld, we may be faithful even unto death through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As we draw near to another terrible milestone in this pandemic of 800,000 people dead. Let us take a time of prayer. Lord, we pray for those who have died. We pray for those who grieve. We pray for those who are still recovering. For leaders who have decisions to make, for those who serve on the front lines of this pandemic, particularly the doctors and nurses who staff the hospitals and care for those who are so desperately ill. We pray for those who must continue to work in dangerous circumstances. We lift all of this to you, knowing and trusting that your will is healing. In the name of Christ, amen. Here in North Carolina, we are praying for those who are fighting the Pilot Mountain Fire, which continues to double in size each day. Lord, we ask that you would give strength to these firefighters weary from fighting the fire. Give them wisdom and keep them safe. Guide their feet and help them to know how to deploy their resources so this fire may be contained. We ask all of this in the name of Christ. Amen. We lift up those known to us to be sick, praying for Mickey and Joan, for Stella and Ben, I invite your prayers. Holy God, pour out your spirit upon them. Work in and through their bodies to restore them to fullness of health in body, mind, and spirit. Pray for those charged with their medical care. We ask that you would give them eyes to see the full person, to see the one before them as you see them, not as a diagnosis, but as a human being and to deploy the healing gifts that they have been given to help support their recovery. We ask all of this in the name of Christ and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.